Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Matthew, let me ask you about switching gears in the middle of all of this. We, okay. we, I talked to you earlier. Let me, let me just say something. If Mr. Bachelor's parents are watching, uh, your son's doing a great job. Well, you and, said that. And he's a professional, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he'll come back uh, you, tomorrow. You have said that you thought he was doing a good job, but let's talk about switching gears or switching strategies. Now, I remember on one other occasion when you and I were working together, you talked about that can be offsetting. Uh, you, one, when you sit down and, you, and you're going down and... You said the broader the better to some extent. But if you have something that's narrowly focused and you, and you hear all this evidence coming in, doesn't that throw you really off your, off your speed? Well, the wind could, I mean, one of the explanations for what's happening today is the wind could just be out of his, his sails. And we've all been through it. It could be just as it. hot in Detroit, you know. It, it could be hot and it could be hot in the courtroom. And, and maybe he is hearing criticism where, where nobody's immune from it. Uh, but I'm sure Mr. Bachelor's experience and he's been there before. He could have a caught up his sleeve also. There have been many times uh, where I have um, changed gears in the course of a trial where I've started out a certain way uh, and for a certain reason and then I came in on summation and said, now ladies and gentlemen, my client sits here presumed innocent and if I've offended any of you with the tactics of uh, going after this prostitute and doing that, then that has, you all assured me that you wouldn't hold it against my client, that he may have hired the wrong law lawyer and take all the heat I can on myself saying I may have done this and I may have done that but that doesn't mean that he's the one who actually wielded the flashlight that caused the injuries that led to Malice Green's death and so on and so forth so there may be a method to the madness there may be a reason for the switch we don't know I don't know enough about these attorneys and their tactics but uh, we're playing many chess games at once you got two juries deciding two different cases one judge deciding deciding a third case uh, you don't you're playing to different audiences it's hard to say why but it's so obvious that the jury's got to be asking themselves has he lost his commitment to his client is there a rift developing between him and his client and or is he simply just out of wind mm. well, also the fact that you talked about the different jurors we have seen for the most part I can't think of any occasion when the judges said oh, all right the Nevers jury uh, you're excused or the Butson's jury you're excused I think in the opening it might have been a little bit different but uh, does that strike you as being stra uh, strange here, or the fact that everything at this point makes sense uh, being done together? Well, the only time you're going to really see one jury excused as opposed to another, the major time is when a statement from one uh, defendant may be mm -hmm. offered uh, incriminating, incriminating against, against the other, or when one defendant takes the stand, and so on and so forth. So uh, it's unusual, but this judge is running a tight courtroom. He's already uh, threatened to lock up two different people. He's running this, uh, uh, this thing as quickly as he can, and as uh, expeditiously as he can and, and he's doing a great job of saving what we call judicial economy he wants this trial done he wants it done right and he's not going to just dismiss one jury and, ha and make a circus out of it unless it absolutely, absolutely has to be necessary. done all right we're going to take a break and come back and when we do we'll show you some testimony that occurred earlier today